Kagoshima is represented by many major historical figures, but two in particular stand out, Saigo Takamori and Shimazu Nariakira. Locally known as Saigo-san, Saigo Takamori was one of the three great nobles in charge of the Meiji Restoration. He was also known as the last true samurai. After resigning from Tokyo bureaucracy and returning to Kagoshima, he and his faithful samurai dominated the local government, which led to the national government to fear a rebellion. Conflict began in Kagoshima, and the Satsuma Rebellion began. This rebellion was the inspiration for the Tom Cruise movie, The Last Samurai. Though it ended in Kagoshima's defeat with Saigo-san's death in 1877, he remained a very respected figure. So much so that he was posthumously pardoned in 1889. So much so that everywhere you look in Kagoshima, you see images of him on billboards, shochu bottles, souvenirs, and more. He is as much an icon of Kagoshima as the volcano Sakurajima. Here is his and his samurai's gravesite. This is the graveyard of Saigo Takamori and his rebels in the Satsuma Rebellion back in the late 1800s. Shimazu Nariakira was the daimyo of Satsuma, present-day Kagoshima, from 1851 to 1858. He was known for his intelligence and progressive thinking for the time. Even though Japan was an isolationist nation, he was particularly interested in Western culture and technology. Satsuma was far from Edo, present-day Tokyo, so he was able to secretly establish communication and trade with the Dutch. He built a school for the study of the Dutch language and Western culture, organized the construction of Japan's first Western-style shipyard for steamships, and focused on strengthening Japan's military and industry. Though he died in 1858, he was one of the most influential figures in modernizing Japan. Here is the Shimazu clan's traditional garden used since 1658, Senganen. We were just at Singanen, which is Nariakira Shimazu's home in Kagoshima. It had a beautiful garden, a shrine to all cats, because they were used for timekeeping on boats without clocks. And I'll show you some footage. I've been to many gardens in Japan, and Senganen is one of the most impressive. The estate is huge, the garden is diverse and beautiful, and it has one of the best views of Sakurajima and Kagoshima. In fact, one element in many Japanese gardens is called borrowed landscape. This refers to blending a garden and with a distant landscape, usually mountains. The Chiran Samurai Garden has some examples of mountains in the background, but Senganen uses Sakurajima in the rear as its borrowed landscape. It's a major flex to use a volcano. The garden also uses the bay around the volcano as a borrowed pond, yet another flex. Another awesome feature is the shrine to cats. Long ago, sailors from Satsuma would bring cats onto their ships for multiple purposes. One, of course, was to catch rats. But the main reason was to tell time. Now, how are cats useful for that? The sailors measured the dilation of cat eyes to approximate the time. Narrower and less dilated would mean that it's closer to high noon, while a fuller dilation implied darkness outdoors. The stages in between narrow and wide were also used to measure the times in between. It seems like it would just make more sense to look outside, but the cat eye method was surprisingly precise and useful for these sailors in getting closer to the exact time. Two particular cats are in shrine here. In the 1500s, Yoshihiro Shimazu led an expedition to Korea and brought seven cats aboard for the purposes mentioned earlier. The remains of the two that survived the trip 
are enshrined here, and it's now a shrine for people to leave well wishes for their pets. This garden is full of amazing sights, and it is definitely one of the most beautiful places to go in Kagoshima. It's full of history from one of the most influential clans in Japan's development, and it's open to the public. People like Saigo-san and Shimazu Nariakira, and places like Sengan-en are what build the local identity. I highly recommend visiting and embracing the local culture. This is a local specialty called shochu ice cream. Shochu is the local uh, spirits, like the liquor. We went tasting that yesterday. It was actually really good. Um, we're going to try the ice cream right now. Live reaction. Wow! Oh, that's really good. It's like, it's like a, you know, like rum cakes where you, like there's a hint of alcohol in it. That's exactly what it tastes like. 10 out of 10. Thanks for watching. If you learned something or enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like, subscribing, and sharing with your friends. I'm working really hard on these videos, so I really, really appreciate any and all support. Thanks again and see you next time!